Hi all, welcome back to KIG2002 Dynamics. Our today lecture is on the third basic methods for the solutions of problem dealing with the motions of particles. And this method is based on the principle of impulse and momentum. In our preceding lectures, we introduce the methods of work energies. It directly relates the force, mass, velocity and displacement in solving problems dealing with the motions of particles. And today, uh, we are looking into another method uh, based on the principle of uh, impulse or momentum. It directly relates force, mass, velocity and time in solving uh, motions of particles. So these are the three methods that we are, will be using. Uh, to solve uh, the kinetics of the particles problems. Uh, first, the Newton's second laws when we were dealing with uh, forces and accelerations, and work and energy methods when we are dealing with uh, velocities and displacements, and finally, for today's lectures, impulse or momentum methods when we are dealing with uh, velocities and times. So, this is the governing uh, equations that we will be discussing later on. Here we go, the kinetics of particles using the impulse and momentum methods. This is the outline of today's lectures. We'll start with the principle of impulse or momentum. This principle is of particular interest in the solutions of problems involving impulsive motions and problems involving impacts. So we will look into these two topics. Followed by uh, different types of impacts, here is referring to direct central impacts and oblique central impact, where the principle of impulse or momentum is applied in solving uh, problems that involving these two types of impacts. If we consider a particle of mass M, act upon by a force F, so Newton's second law can be expressed in the form of uh, F uh, M A or F uh, D M V D T, where this M V is the linear momentum of the particles. By multiplying both sides by D T and integrating from a time T1 and T2, so it basically gives us F uh, D T equals to mv2 minus mv1. The integrals uh, f dt from t1 to t2 uh, is a vector known as a linear impulse or simply the impulse of the force f during the intervals uh, t1 to t2. So if we transposing the last terms uh, from uh, here, we will have uh, mv1 plus uh, impulse uh, 1 to 2 from time 1 to time 2 equals to mv2. Here it can be defined as the final momentum of the particles can be obtained by adding factorially its initial momentum and the impulse of the force during the time intervals. Initial momentum and the impulse of the force during the time intervals equals to final momentum. The dimensions of the impulse of a force are force multiplied times and the units for the impulse of a force are Newton seconds or kg meter per second. So knowing the impulse of a force during the interval of time uh, 1 to 2 uh, is written as an integral of uh, f dt t1 to t2. Uh, we can then resolve the force f into rectangular components. So it can be written as a uh, impulse uh, 1 to 2 equals to uh, t1 t2 f dt and it can be equals to uh, i resolve in terms of uh, 
rectangular components, we have this fx dt plus j d1 d2 fy dt plus k d1 d2 fz dt. So it can be resolved into uh, rectangular components. These components of the impulse of force are respectively equal to the area under the curve. If you are plotting the components fx, fy, and fz against t time. And in the case of uh, the force, f is a constant magnitude and directions. So we can determine the impulse uh, from the interval of uh, d1, uh, d2, which is the area under the, the curve Ft by uh, presenting it as impulse 1 to 2 equals to F. In this case, it's constant d2 minus d1. And it has the same direction as F. So to recap back, when the particles uh, is act upon by a force F uh, during a given time intervals, the final momentums mv2 of the particles can be obtained by adding uh, vectorally uh, its uh, initial momentums mv1 and the impulse of the force F during uh, these time intervals t1 to t2. We note that the kinetic energies and works we have learned earlier are scalar quantities. Uh, the momentums and impulse here are vectors quantities. So to obtain the analytic solutions uh, from uh, this mv1 plus the impulse 1 to 2 equals to mv2, we can then write it as uh, m v x 1 plus t1 to t2 f x dt equals to m v x 2 or in the y directions we can rewrite it as m v y 1 plus t1 to t2 f y dt equals to m v y 2 again in the z directions m v z1, the initial momentums, plus the impulse of the force in the directions of uh, z, dt equals to the final uh, uh, momentums in the direction of z, m, v, z, 2. When there are several force act on the particles, then the impulse of each uh, of the force must be considered. So we can also write it as uh, m uh, v one plus the summations of all the impulse of a force acting equals to m v two. And when the problems uh, involve uh, two particles of more, each particles can be considered a separate. Uh, entities and it can be re rewritten as summations of uh, m v1 of all the particles plus uh, summation of the uh, impulse from 1 to 2 equals to summation of m v2 and in the conditions of uh, when no external force uh, exerted on the particles and more generally if the sum of the external force is zero then the second terms in the, the equations will become zero so when we have uh, no external 
forces or uh, the sum of the external forces equals to zero, then uh, the summations of impulse one to two will be equals to zero. Then it will basically give us a summation of m v one equals to summation of m v two, and in this case uh, we are saying that the total momentum of the particles is conserved. Next, impulsive motions. So when a force acting on a particle during a very short time intervals and is large enough to produce a definite change in momentums, then uh, the resulting motions is called uh, impulsive motions. So these are the two examples of impulsive motions. The thrust of a rocket acts over a specific period of time to give the rockets linear momentums. The impulse applied to a real car by the wall brings its momentum to zero, change momentums. Then uh, crash uh, tests are often performed to help improve safety in different vehicles. Basically, there's a change in momentums. Then uh, these types of uh, motions uh, is called impulsive motions. So here, we are saying that when the force acting on the particles during a very short time interval, and this force is large enough to cause a significant change in momentums, and it is called an impulsive force. And the motions or the resulting motions due to this impulsive force, we call it uh, impulsive motions. So when an impulsive force acts on the particles, so it basically gives us the equations uh, of uh, impulse momentum becomes mv1 plus the summations of f delta t, very short period of times, equals to uh, mv2. So if you look at the examples uh, here, when a baseball is struck by a bat, right? When the baseball coming in that direction is struck by the bats, uh, and the contacts occur over a very short periods of time intervals, and but the force is large enough to change the sense of the ball motions. So if you change the ball motions also to these directions, and this f delta t we call it as uh, impulsive force, right, and. Basically, it fulfills uh, the force is large enough, happens a very short period of times, and it causes okay change in momentums. Then this force is impulsive force. The entire motions is called impulsive motions. Any force that uh, not an impulsive force uh, may be neglected. So non-impulsive forces uh, includes uh, the weight of the bodies, for example, the weight of the ball itself. Uh, the force exerted by a spring is not an impulsive force, or any other force which is known to be very small compared with an impulsive force. So here, non-impulsive force are force for which F delta T is small and therefore may be neglected. So it's an example is the weight of the baseball. We also note that the methods of impulse and momentums is particularly effective in the analysis of the impulsive motions of our particles. Because it involves only the initials and final velocities of the particles. And the impulses of the force exerted on the particles. In the case of uh, direct application of Newton's second laws or others' hands, would require the determination of forces as a function of times. And the integrations of this equation over time interval delta t.
So it is not as convenient as uh, the impulse or momentum methods. In the case of the impulsive motions of several particles, the equations now can be rewritten as uh, summations of uh, mv1 plus summation of the impulsive force f uh, delta t equals to summation of uh, mv2. The second terms of these equations, uh, uh, summation of f uh, delta t, involve only impulsive external forces. If all these uh, external forces acting on the various particles are non-impulsive, then these second terms uh, in the equations uh, basically equals to zero, and the equations can be reduced to uh, summations of uh, uh, mv1 equals to summations of mv2. In the case of uh, summation of f uh, delta t uh, equals to zero where uh, they are all not impulsive force so here if you have summation of mv1 equals to summation of mv2 as we discussed earlier the total momentum of particles is conserved when these situations occurs uh, it can be demonstrated as in the example of uh, two particles which are moving freely collide with each other. In this case, uh, the total momentum of the particles is conserved. However, the total energy is generally not conserved. And these involve uh, the collisions or the impacts of two particles, which will be discussed in our next uh, topics. So again, when we are saying that the total momentum of the particles is conserved, then we are saying that uh, the summations of f delta t equal to zero. So uh, this happens either that the resultant of the external forces is zero, or the time interval delta t is very very short, or the external force are non-impulsive. Our next topic impacts. When there are two bodies uh, collide with each other and these collisions between the bodies occur in a very small intervals of times in which the two bodies exert a relatively uh, large force uh, on each other and this is called impact. The common normals uh, to the surface in context during the impacts is called line of impacts. And if the mass centers on the two colliding bodies are located on this line, what I mean here is a line of impacts, then the impacts is a central impacts. Otherwise, uh, it is called eccentric impacts when uh, the colliding bodies are not located on the line of impacts. So our current studies will be only limited to the central impacts of two particles. And if the velocity of two particles are directed along the line of impacts, then the impact is said to be a direct impact. Whereas if the either of the particles move along a line other than the line of impacts, so it's not along the line of impacts, then it is said to be an oblique impact. Considering two particles A and B of mass ma and mb uh, they are moving in the same uh, straight lines and to the right uh, with the velocities of va and bb 
considering uh, VA is larger than VB. So if VA is larger than VB, then a particle A will eventually strike particle B. Under the impacts, the two particles will uh, deform. And at the end of the periods of deformations, uh, they will have the same velocity u. So they are in contact and moving at a common velocities. The periods of restitutions will also take place at the end of the collisions. So that the two particles uh, either will have regains uh, their original shapes or will stay permanently deformed. This all depends upon the magnitude of the impact forces or upon the materials involved. And if we wish to determine the final velocities of the two bodies after impact, we should consider first the total momentum of the two body system is preserved. MA VA plus MB VB equals to MA VA primes, sorry, MA V. Uh, a primes, which the final velocity of a particle A is, plus mb vb primes. There are two unknowns, va primes and vb primes, so a second relation between the final velocity uh, is required. If we consider the motions of a particles A during the periods of uh, deformations, and we apply the principle of impulse of momentum. And since this uh, impulsive force acting on A uh, during this period is the force B exerted by B, then it can be written as MA VA minus uh, the integral P dt equals to MAU, which is the common uh, velocities during these uh, periods of deformations. And if now we consider uh, the motions of particles A during the periods of restitutions. And if we denote uh, the R as the force exerted by B on A during these periods, then uh, by applying the principle of impulse of momentum again, we will have MAU, which is the initial uh, momentum, minus uh, integral RDT equals to MAVA primes, which is the final momentum associated with uh, the final velocity of particle A. The force R exerted on A during these periods of restitutions differ from the force P exerted during the periods of uh, deformations. And the magnitude uh, of this integral R dt of its impulse is usually smaller than the magnitude of uh, integral P dt of the impulse of P. And the ratio of these magnitudes, uh, integral R dt over uh, integral uh, P dt, We call it as the coefficients of restitutions uh, represented by E. And these values are basically uh, always between 0 and 1. And it depends to a large extent on the two materials involved. And if from these two equations, uh, uh, under principle of impulse momentums, uh, we can determine the coefficients of restitutions E for the particles A as this U minus VA prime over VA minus U. A similar analysis of particle B also can be uh, performed uh, for periods of deformations and periods of uh, restitutions. It will yield uh, the coefficient of restitutions E equals to VB primes minus U 
over u minus vb. If we can combine these two uh, equations or relations, it will lead to the second relationship between the final velocities, which is vb prime minus va primes equals to e va minus vb. So with these second relationships equations, we can solve for the final velocities of two particles undergoing impacts. It's not that for perfectly plastic impacts, where the coefficients of restitutions uh, E equal to zero, here, if we look at the equations vv primes minus va primes equals to e the coefficients of restitutions multiplied with va minus vb we can see that uh, vb primes minus va primes uh, can represent the relative velocity of the two particles after the impacts whereas va minus vb represent their relative velocity before impacts so these equations can be expressed as the relative velocity of two particles after impacts uh, can be obtained by multiplying their relative velocity before impacts by the coefficients of uh, restitutions. The positive signs for VA primes uh, will indicate that A moved to the right after impacts and a negative sign will indicate that they move to the left. There are two particular cases of impacts uh, are of special interest. The first, uh, a perfectly plastic impacts, where your coefficients of restitution is equal to zero. So in this case, uh, it will yield our VB prime equals to VA prime equals to V primes meaning the two bodies uh, will be going together after the impacts. So uh, the total momentum of the particles is conserved in this case uh, where you have MAVA plus MBVB equals to MA plus MBV primes. So it can be uh, solved uh, for the common velocity v primes of the two particles using uh, these particular equations, uh, since uh, the v b primes and v a primes uh, equals to the same velocity v primes under the uh, perfectly plastic impact equations, where your coefficients of restitutions equals to zero, meaning there is no periods of uh, restitutions and both particles stay together after impacts. Another case of impacts of interest will be the perfectly elastic impact where your E or the coefficient of restitutions equals to 1. This will express your the relative velocities before and after impacts are equals giving us vb prime minus va primes equals to va minus vb from these equations so what it means here are the impulses received by each particle during the periods of the deformations and during the periods of restitutions are equals that is why uh, this will be equals to this, and it will be giving us uh, the E equals to 1. And in this case, uh, the particles will move away from each other after impact with the same uh, velocity with which they approach each other before the impacts. So in this case, uh, uh, we are saying that a uh, perfectly elastic impacts, the total energy of the two particles as well as the total momentum of these two particles uh, is conserved. 
So we can say that under perfectly elastic impact. Our uh, coefficient of restitution uh, E equals to 1, then we have our equations from the second relations on the relative uh, uh, velocities uh, between the two uh, particles is uh, VB prime minus uh, VA prime equals to VA minus VB. Or we can rewrite as a VA plus VA primes equals to VB plus VB primes. Under impacts, we also mentioned that uh, the total momentum is conserved, whether it's a perfect, perfectly elastic impact or perfectly plastic impacts. Then we have here uh, under perfect. Uh, elastic impacts uh, the total momentums is conserved so we are having uh, uh, summations of m v1 equal to summation of m v2 so in this case uh, we will have m a v a plus m v v b equals to m a v a prime plus m b v b prime. Uh, rearrange it, we will have m a v a minus v a prime equals to m b v b prime minus v b. All right, so treating this as my first equation and second equations, if you can uh, multiply uh, uh, the equations of uh, one and two member by members, then we will have okay uh, m a uh, v a minus v a primes. Multiply with this uh, VA plus VA primes equals to MV uh, BB uh, BB primes right minus BB multiply with uh, VB prime plus VB right. So in this case, uh, we can have m a v a square minus m a v a prime square equals to m b v b prime square uh, minus m b v b square. So if we are taking the uh, energy. Uh, principles we have 1 over 2 m a v a square plus 1 over 2 m b v b square equals to 1 over 2 m a v a prime square plus 1 over 2 m b v b prime square so in this case, we are saying that uh, under perfectly plastic, oh, sorry, under perfectly elastic impact, uh, the total energy is also conserved when E equals to 1 or it is perfectly elastic impact. These are the some examples of uh, impacts and how uh, uh, the coefficients of restitutions uh, is used. So in uh, sports, 
equipments, the coefficients of restitution is used to characterize the bouncingness right, of different uh, sport equipments. And the US Golf Association basically limits the COR of golf ball at a 0.83. Whereas uh, in the civil engineers use these uh, coefficients of restitutions to model rocks falling from the hillsides. If we consider the case when the velocity of two colliding particles are not directed along the line of impacts, for example, here. So this impact, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is considered oblique impact. Here, uh, to be exact, oblique uh, central impacts. Since the velocity of VA primes as well as the VB primes of the particles after impacts are unknown, and in the directions as well as in the magnitudes, so the determinations will require the use of four independence uh, equations in this case. So how we can analyze this? So first, uh, we understand that uh, the components uh, along the T axis, the tangential components uh, of the momentum of each particle uh, considered uh, separately and is conserved. So here we have our VAT equals to VAT primes as well as VBT equals to VBT primes, right? Under uh, the tangential components along the T axis, uh, the momentum uh, of each particle is conserved. Next, the components along the n axis, the normal components of the total uh, momentums of these two particles is conserved along the n axis, which is the uh, normal components uh, is conserved uh, for the total momentums in this case. Then we have uh, ma va in the n directions or n axis plus mb vb n equals to ma va primes in the normal axis n axis plus mb vb prime in the normal axis the components along the n axis or the normal uh, axis uh, of the relative velocity of the two particles after impacts can be also obtained right, by what we have learned earlier uh, with their relative velocity before impacts uh, multiplying with the coefficients of restitutions equals to the, uh, the relative velocity after impacts, but they are in the normal or n axis. So with these four uh, equations, one, two, three, and four, uh, we can use it to solve the four unknowns. Here is referring to the velocities of uh, the particles after the impacts or what we call the final velocities in terms of their magnitudes and directions. You have now learned uh, three different methods for the solutions of kinetics problems. First, uh, the direct applications of Newton's second laws, summation of F equal to MA, the methods of uh, work and energies, and today's uh, the methods of uh, impulse and momentums. We can always choose or select the methods best suited for the problems or parts of the problems under the considerations. You also have seen that the methods of work and energy is in many cases is more suitable than the direct applications of Newton's second laws. But you also see that the methods of uh, work energy has limitations and sometimes it have to be supplemented by the use of uh, the Newton's second laws. So for example, in the case where we want to determine an acceleration or a normal force.
for the solutions of problems involving no impulsive force, then it will be usually be found that the uh, the applications of Newton's second law, summation of f equal to m a, will yield a solution just as fast as the methods of uh, impulse and momentums and the methods of work and energies. However, in the problems of impacts, the methods of impulse and momentums is the only practical uh, methods. A solution based on the direct application of uh, Newton's second law, summation of f equal to m a, may not be so practical uh, in the case of uh, uh, the problem involving uh, impacts. The methods of work and energy uh, also cannot be used uh, because it involves a loss of uh, mechanical energies uh, during impacts unless uh, the impacts uh, is a perfectly elastic impact where the total energy is conserved. There are also problems that uh, involve uh, the combinations of uh, uh, use of the, these three methods. If you consider uh, the pendulums problem that we have discussed earlier, uh, uh, you have a pendulums A of mass MA with the length L, uh, which is released with no velocity from uh, positions A1. The pendulum uh, swings uh, freely in the vertical planes and hits the second uh, so-called pendulum B of mass MB with also the length L, which is initially at rest. And after the impact, with coefficients of uh, restitutions uh, E, the pendulum B will swing through an angle theta. That we wish to determine. So in this case, uh, we can uh, divide the solutions of problem into three parts. The first pendulum A, a swing from A1 to A2 here. Uh, the principle of uh, conservation of energy can be used to determine the velocity A uh, of A uh, when it reach A2. So when the pendulum A hits the pendulum B at that particular moment, uh, using the fact that uh, the total momentum of the two uh, pendulum is uh, conserved uh, because of the, the impacts and also the relations between their relative uh, velocities, can be used to determine the velocities uh, at A3 for uh, both uh, particles A and B, which is the VA3 and VB3. And finally, uh, when pendulum B swing from B3 uh, to B4, from the B3 to B4, uh, we can apply back the principle of our conservations of energies to pendulums. Uh, we can determine the maximum elevations uh, Y4 at here and the angle uh, theta can then be determined. Of course, uh, if the problems involve the determinations of uh, normal force, the tension of the ropes, we can also combine using the Newton's second law where the summation of F equal to MA uh, is applied.